Yo, what's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint, back with another statue unboxing and review. This time, we have the Sideshow Collectibles Magneto Maquette. I know I'm super late on reviewing this piece. Everybody has dropped a review. I'm probably the last one that is going to drop it. But uh, I'll tell you why, and we'll take a look at the statue, unboxing, all that. Stay tuned. I'm super late on getting this Magneto piece. I had the XM Studios white Magneto, but I've been collecting the Sideshow X-Men, and I just felt like this one is going to be a better fit to go with those other statues. Originally, this was teased as a premium format. I'll throw a picture up here. It kind of didn't have that good of a feedback or reception from collectors. So they went back in, they added some more things to the base and decided to make it a maquette and priced it at $750. Personally, I didn't feel like it was worth $750, especially the changes. I didn't feel like it was that much different from the premium format version. So I actually uh, canceled this when I had it on pre-order. It was the first piece that I have ever canceled and I got my non-refundable deposit back. But uh, I always kind of had my eye on it. I would ask other collectors who had it like, hey man, how is it really in person? And, and a lot of people did like it. And when I saw it at San Diego Comic-Con with Cable and with Jean Grey and all those other X-Men, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get it. Um, so I got this from my boy Mr. X over there at the Extreme Channel. He gave me a good price on it. And uh, happy to have it in the collection. You can see this is number 302 out of 1,250 of the exclusive. Let's go ahead and bust this bad boy wide open. All right, guys. So, sick art box here. I always loved it when I saw other collectors do unboxings. You have the statue on the front. Awesome colors with this pink, purple, and kind of electricity, magnetism kind of look to it. So, really, uh, really nice art box here. All right, so it has the mixed media cape on the top here. That was another thing that really kind of turned me off about this piece. I'm not really a fan of these mixed media capes. I'm not good at posing them. They come wrinkled. And I'm 100% wrong. <laughs> it's not the cape that's in here. It's his arms and pieces of the base. So let's go ahead and remove these pieces. So on these pieces of the base, uh, the base is a sentinel head, and he's kind of taking the metal from the sentinel and making it rise up like a la Terminator 2 style. Now from pictures, when I used to see this one, like, I don't know, on Sideshow's website or whatever, I always felt like the sentinel base looked like plastic. So, um, you know, when I saw that San Diego, it, it didn't really come off that way to me. So we'll see if it looks like that in person, in hand. Alright, so it looks like the cape is on the bottom. So let's start removing the base. Like I said, Sentinel head base. It's supposed to look like from an aerial view, like you could really see, the, you know, how the face looked. Here's the bottom of the base. This is the first piece that I bought in a long time that wasn't like brand new and just shipping. It's a pretty big chunk right here, guys. Right now for the X-Men collection, I have Rogue, Wolverine, X-23, and juggernaut so i thought that magneto would add a nice amount of color to what i got going on there because all of that is like very blue yellow and greenish then juggernaut with the brown the unmasked portrait looks really good we'll get a close-up look at all this stuff then you have the masked looks really good another large piece of the sentinel base and then we have magneto himself which definitely is a good size to him. You can see he keys in on his foot to give it a floating effect. Just go ahead and key him in right away. Let's go ahead and grab this cape.
Also, you have to display the cape, but actually, it's part of what keys in there. Okay. Try to pose these damn capes, man. <laughs> All right, that looks okay. All right, so let's piece this guy together. So first of all, we have, let's put his mask portrait. I mean, this is probably what I'll use 99% of the time. You know, the, the, one of the big changes I noticed from the premium format to the maquette was the position of his uh, left hand, where they had it more upturned, more similar to the X-Men 1 Jim Lee cover. It was tilted down at first. That was kind of a weird choice. Let's see where these pieces go. Man, I don't know what this is trying to tell me to do. All right, that looks like it goes right there. So all these pieces have keys with pegs in them. Okay, okay. This probably goes in the back. All right, guys, so that's Magneto all assembled. Let's take them all in. Okay, okay. Got to fix this cape a little bit, but otherwise not so bad. See if I can get this cape how I want it. I'm trying to let that base breathe a little bit, you know? All right, guys, so getting it in hand is definitely a, an impressive piece. Like, it's... Its base has a lot of like mass to it. Like if you look at it outstretched like this, which is like what a lot of what they added to make it a maquette, to make it look like the the metal of the sentinel head is rising up, showing off his mutant ability. I like the uh, the hover look to where it looks like he's not keyed into anything. He looks like he's just floating there. I don't know if I'm loving that cave. I still got to figure out the best way to uh, pose it. So before we get into some close-ups, let's talk a little bit about Magneto. Magneto, his first appearance was in X-Men 1, right along with the original X-Men team, right with Professor X. You know, Magneto's story is kind of, uh, kind of has like a two-part to it. He's a Holocaust survivor. He survived the Auschwitz camps. And he's persecuted because he's a Jew. And he's also persecuted because he's a mutant. So he's got like two things going against him in this in this world here. Magneto's origin always resonated with me. I, n not many of you know this. My grandfather is actually a Holocaust survivor as well. He is a little younger than what Magneto would have been when he survived. So uh, I always kind of related to that in his story. Too bad Magneto became a villain, whereas my grandfather was all about peace. He's definitely one of the top five villains in the Marvel universe. Uh, it's so cool that he shares his first appearance with so many others and he's on the cover as well I think it's September of 1963 uh, been in many movies he was one of the focal points of all the Brian Singer X-Men movies and uh, I'm excited to see if or what they you know do with him when they bring him into the MCU but enough about all that background history let's go ahead and uh, get some close-ups and take a better look at Magneto So like I said, the biggest thing I was worried about was the base looking kind of plasticky. But it definitely doesn't look like that up close. It has that statue polystone feel. It has paint with nice weathering on it. You can look at like the uh, skin tone parts of his face and you can see battle damage where you have uh, this metallic paint underneath it. Same with the purple. It all looks very weathered. You have a part over here that has wires exposed. Where the metal is shifting and kind of rising up, it starts to get more silver towards the tips. And I'm interested to see kind of what it looks like with Wolverine and X-23 because they both have those sentinel hand bases. I figured that this would be the head to those sentinels. And it's another reason why I wanted him. It kind of goes with this whole diorama that I'm putting together over there. I did plan on putting him on the bottom shelf with Juggernaut, but I'm worried that there's not going to be enough space now. Anyway, I kind of talked about the pose. I think it looks awesome how he has that uh, floating look. It, it really got pulled off well. He's keyed into 
one of the pieces of the sentinel in the back and you really can't even notice it I like the color scheme classic red and uh, purple some of the details on his shins and such it kind of reminds me of onslaught too kind of a little bit more detailed uh, you can see like his knees have some line work around it going to like the groin area has a honeycomb texture his belt is a little bit more a little more techy same thing with his chest and underarms it goes into those different uh, textures gauntlets match the boots which have that onslaught feel to it as well I've heard a lot of collectors say they didn't like the helmet and how it was kind of so fire truck red and not really shiny I think it looks really good though I think his face behind the mask looks really good you get that look of depth uh, the eyes all whited out is sinister as hell and he has the little devil horns like the classic Magneto look a lot going on with the sentinel head it looks like they would have had to have sculpted a full head and then kind of started messing with it right to give it this kind of look because his jaw is right here and then the metal kind of coming out of up out of it the red eye on the bottom and if you could look really closely you see the other eye on the very bottom so I like the portrait I think the teeth look good five o'clock shadow looks good and then going over to the unmasked portrait I think that they sculpted the hair really well it has even kind of some free strands looks a little fragile a little delicate but no breakages he does have pupils on this portrait I doubt that I would ever use it but it's nice to uh, have the option personally I wish that they would have made the cape optional like uh, with Thor breaker of brimstone because um, I probably would have posed without it. I mean, even though he, you know, he iconically rocks the cape, but I'm just, I'm just not really a big fan of the mixed media capes. Taking a look at the measurements of this guy, like I said, he is a tall piece. He stands at about just shy of 25 inches tall. The cape can make the depth. Um, shorter or longer depending on the way you do it but the sculpted pieces if you want to look at the depth you're looking at about like 16 inches deep so I gotta figure out if I got some space for him there next to Juggernaut I don't want Juggernaut's hands to be covering him you know but we'll see what we could do Let's go ahead and put his classic helmet back on. Let's get him over there in the display area. Get him with the lights on him. And we'll take some good pictures as well before we move him. Alright, so this is kind of how I pictured Magneto would be when I bought him from Mr. X. I really wanted to fill out this space down here with Juggernaut. And there we go. I think it fit pretty well. I was a little concerned with how it would look being that Juggernaut was kind of like punching at something. But, um... I think it does good. It's got X-Men villains at the bottom. You got heroes at the top here. And it's really starting to come together. I think what happens is we'll fill out this whole space when uh, Jean Grey and Cable and Cyclops come in. And we'll start filling out with all X-Men pieces. But for right now, I think that's a good spot for Magneto. I got my original X-Men team Funko Pops at the top there. These are just some, kind of some placeholders here. Raphael chilling. I'm going to have Donatello actually ship today. But, yeah, man. It's looking pretty good. Got the lights on them. Pairs up nicely. We'll go ahead and close this out before we start moving the piece around. I want to thank you guys for watching this review, even though the piece came out some time ago, maybe a few months ago, almost a year or so. Uh, make sure to hit the like button on the way out. Drop me a comment. What do you think about the Magneto maquette? And uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Stay minty fresh. Peace.